Okay, am I live? I should be. Let's just check this is all running okay. And it is. <laughs> um, all right, let's switch to the live screen. So we're continuing from yesterday. Um, I think I said yesterday, the scheduled streams, this being one of them, uh, they're Wednesdays and Thursdays from 10 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Uh, you know, give or take some time depending on how long certain things take. Um, that's in my time zone, GMT or PST, it's 2 till 3.30 p.m., I believe. Um, so in the scheduled streams, we're going to be working on this character, which uh, if you've missed previous streams where we've created the character and gone through to this point already, they're, they're on my YouTube channel. Um, yesterday we ran a little longer than an hour and a half. It was closer to two uh, just to do to try and get the variations done. Uh, in hindsight, I probably would have liked to spend another half hour or something on the final um, design. Uh, but that's okay, I'm just trying to show you my process um, and get to a, to a final character um, so I can show you how it's done. Anyway, so today we have, oops, clicked on the wrong screen. Today we have these variations that we did yesterday and we're going to be going into color finally. Um, so I think I explained this yesterday, but I like to work in black and white for as long as possible um, for a number of reasons. One of them, you don't have to worry about color at that stage, um, so you're not messing around with anything other than the design, really. Uh, but one of the big points is for a client's point of view, um, color can be very um, divisive, divisive. Uh, it, a, a lot of people don't like a specific color um, or whatever and if a client sees something in color and it's like just the color putting them off um, that's not really the point because color should be able to change and you should have color variations um, in concept work especially you should be able to do variations on the color so that shouldn't be the main deciding factor when it's in black and white there's no color they're pretty much focused on just the design itself which is exactly what you want um, at least until you get to this stage where we're going to be adding the color um, so what I'm going to do is something fairly similar that I've done uh, professionally as well um, just before we get to the color stage, obviously we've got to pick the design, or this would be the point the the client would pick the design that they want to see uh, expanded on. So uh, my mind is between the first two on the left here. Um, not a big fan at all of this right hand one at the moment. Um, I'm leaning more towards the original design just because it's more um, of, it's got more of the wizard side of the pirate as well, which I think I started to lose in this central design, although it is a cool design. So I'm thinking I might just start splicing. Uh, so I'm going to grab my select tool and we're going to try a few different things with this design before moving on. Oh dear. Let's do that. Copy the head over. You can see something like that. You can try out the head. Um, this leg particularly, I'm not very fond of, especially when sitting next to a leg like this. I much prefer this. So we're going to do the same thing for this leg. Um, I think we're going to have to take it higher. Copy that across. Remove some of this. Let's get rid of this brush. 
what's it on something I was using yesterday. Um, so we'll go back to our S2, which is sort of the main one I've been using at the moment. I need to alter this silhouette slightly. So it's gone here and we can erase all around that. Okay. Um just gonna grab liquify tool, pull this oh we've not selected the leg. I'm going to pull this in a bit. I'm rushing through this stage pretty quickly because uh, I'm covering a lot of the stuff I did yesterday. And uh, I want to get onto the color variations for today's stream if possible. So we'll do that, that's fine. Raise some more of the leg that's behind so it's not interfering. Okay. So, design wise, uh, I like this much better with the leg here. Let's move these down. I'm not sure about the head. I quite like the eye patch, perhaps the hair. I kind of prefer the having the mutton chops. So again, what we can do is you just erase around the parts you want. That's looking quite cool there, I think. Yeah, I'm liking that. Uh, we've got some sort of artifact going on here. Is that where I've erased too much of the leg, perhaps? So I'll just work that back in. It's fine. Uh, and we've got this strap still, so let's make sure that's showing. Perhaps have another bit of it higher up. Tuck in this around the strap. Okay, no, don't need the double strap. That's altering too much. Doesn't look so good. Okay, we're going to work with this. I think this is going to be the design that we carry forward. So. Squash these onto this layer. And don't worry, I've saved the all the other designs in other files. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this, move it over. Oh dear. Grab this, move it over. So same kind of setup. The three designs, I'm just going to flip the image make sure it looks all right in terms of layout. I think that's fine. Maybe further left with this guy. Okay, that's better. So we have the design we're going to move forward with and now we need to add color. Uh, just before I do that, I'm going to do something I usually do, which is add a layer above the background layer. Uh, I've got my gradient tool. It's on my G is the shortcut, and I've got it on this setting, which basically cuts a line across the image. And what I like to do is if you hold shift, it, it keeps the line straight in whatever direction you're going. Um, and I like to start about there and do, maybe do it a couple times just to get, just how I like, get something like that. Reduce the flow of the opacity fill down to something like this. Already you can see the lighting effect of that and I like to flip it and sometimes that works nicely. I think that's pretty cool. Maybe we can try do that again. So I'll flip the uh hmm. I don't know where the button is for that. 
Alright, we'll just do it again. Manually flip it. Fill will turn right down. And now I'm thinking I want it sharper, so instead of going like all the way up, which creates a much wider gradient, we'll do like most of the way up. Again, turning down the fill, inverting with Control I. Um, yeah, we're just fiddling here, uh, but that's fine. I adds better lighting to the to the piece, so that's fine. Characters in a well lit background now. I'm going to remove these other two designs, they're unnecessary. Okay, let's get into it. Color. So I'm going to make a new layer above the leftmost one, set it to color, and I'm going to alt click to mask it onto that character. Now the color layer, uh, what it's supposed to do is maintain the luminosity, so the, the values that we've mapped out in grayscale here, um, and just add color. That It does do that most of the time, but what you'll see is um, you do start to lose the value. Um, it doesn't maintain it's pretty good at it but it doesn't maintain the exact uh, values you've created and given that we spent a long time trying to make sure they're pretty well defined values um, this can start to alter the image in a bad way so above all of these layers i like to just have a fairly simple adjustment layer of hue and saturation that's at zero saturation that will keep everything in black and white and I can turn that on and off just to check my values from time to time. So color we've got the I've got my soft brush it's so simple do I have a color on it or anything it's a simple airbrush you can see it's it's no hard edges very very soft um, heavily controlled by the pressure um, and what we're going to do is block in just a whole tone. Um, usually I like to do a cooler color, it's pretty much desaturated. Um, and this will just act as a base. Um, I like to use a cool color and you can see we have some problems with the main image here. So I'm just going to go back to the, the grayscale there. And you can see, because I've masked the color to the to this character, um, there are bits that are showing the background where it's been unable to color. Uh, all that is, is I've missed that spot in painting because I was using the background value as part of the the image itself. Um, so we're just going to turn off the color layer. We may have to flick it on and off a few times just to remember where everything is. But we're going to go in and you can just grab the value that's there already if you don't want to alter it. And this will fill in those gaps. Got a little one here. Another one here. Uh, there's another way you can obviously just put a solid uh, value behind the whole character. This is probably a much more fiddly way of doing it as opposed to that method. Um, but it's alright, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I'm just getting it done. Um, and we can fill in the rest when we come to final render anyway. So that's fine. They were just quite big holes. I think I've sorted most of them, so that's okay. Uh, we're actually just going to delete these other two and then 
create the same again with the altered character now that has those holes filled in. Let's get them lined up better again. Okay. Um, so this layer's now changed. Let's stick that back on there. There we go. Okay, back to coloring. So we'll get our airbrush again. Uh, I like to work with a cool tone as a base, usually because um, the bits I like to leave it in are, are shadow or dark areas, uh, which I think it's almost nicer to just leave them with a slightly colder tone. You usually have some kind of warm light if you're out in the exterior, obviously the sun is warm, um, which leaves shadows to be cooler. Okay, so color. This is where we're actually coloring. Grab a skin tone. We can darken it a bit. It's not going to change it much though because the value is being controlled by the image underneath. And we're not going to worry too much about detail or anything here. We just want to block it in and make sure none of that tone is missed on areas where it needs to be. So we're brushing it a lot across the head. Grab that same tone, work it onto the hand, arm. This might look a bit weird at the moment. But you'll see as we start to blend in all the colors, it'll look a bit more natural. So obviously we don't want blue hair, for example. Um, I'm thinking something dark or it's probably like a dark brown. So I'm going to push it more into the orange section. Uh, we don't want it too saturated because it's going to conflict with the skin tone. I'm going to very gently brush it on. And I'm going to leave some of the highlights to be quite uh, blue. Okay. I'm going to remove the color from the eye. Get a little saturated red, push that into the corners of the eye, just around the edges. And you can see already that's looking a little more natural. Um, you can push some of the probably want to push it more to like a bright orangey red salmon color just add a touch of that on the tip of his ear where you're going to get some subsurface lighting going on around the cheek where he's blushing slightly or slightly around the nose Definitely some on the lip. It's going to be ever so slightly more saturated than the rest of the face, usually. Um, though obviously it will vary depending on the person. We'll add a touch of the subsurface on this side as well, just for good measure. And you can already see we're starting to, to get some good colors in here. Now the colors added with a color layer are never going to be great they're a really good base um, so what I like to do is work stuff in on a color there um, and preserve the sort of grayscale plan that we had initially and then um, once I'm happy with color placement uh, and the color variation that is picked I can move on and actually paint over it on a normal layer 
to bring some life back to it because this looks a bit disconnected perhaps. Um, so that's definitely a problem that occurs with color layers, but they're great for this purpose, especially concept, because I can swap this out for another color layer, I can alter it, and it keeps the same values. Uh, obviously, you don't want to alter it too much for a human. If the skin is in the same layer, you, you can split up the layers if you want um, to a skin layer, a clothing layer, so on and so forth. Um, here I can already see that the color of the skin is slightly too yellow, so I'm actually going to push it more towards the red, which I like a lot more. So that's fine. Um, so I'm going to do what I just said, and I'm going to add another layer, attach that down again, color again same brush, soft brush, and I'm going to do clothing with this brush. Um, so I quite like the blue on him already, I think, but I'm not, we're, we're going to try some other stuff perhaps. Uh, but this is what this stage is for, we've got a couple of other bases for this. So we're going to stick with blue on this one, I think. I'm going to add some turquoisey tones. have this blend and obviously the trousers should be a different color perhaps so let's go to like a dark brown and this strip of material that's a much lighter hue um quite like keeping that gray let's see if it looks like blue to match there. I think the grey works. Let's just desaturate it some more. It's looking very green. No, okay. We'll keep it the blue grey. Um, and we'll grab this colour. Get it on here, maybe a little more towards the red. Can have that on there too. Probably a lot more towards the red. And you're going to find if you've added a lot of straps, you're going to be using a lot of varieties of orange and red tones for leather, uh, particularly on fantasy characters, which is fine, um, something that bugs me a little bit, I don't want too much of it interfering with other bits, um, but it's a nice separation, currently this is looking quite nice. Uh, we've got this bone or artifact type armor. Um, I quite like the pale blue, it ties in nicely with the rest of it, but we're going to try, I'm going to go on to another layer, color layer again, and we're going to use this for all the white bits, so the trim and this, and I'm going to make it a sort of gold or coppery if possible. And what you can do is you don't always have to go in with the colour that you know you want. Um, I've often gone in with like a bright, bright pink, just so you can see where you're painting. And then from there, because it's on its separate layer, you can just tweak it with the hue saturation adjustment, which is control U by default I think. I've changed some of the buttons but I believe that's default. I'm talking really slowly because I'm trying to concentrate on 
getting these lines in. Okay, I will just work this across all the all the white. Obviously, you have different pieces, which may be different colors, not all the same material, perhaps. Um, these are things to consider. Um, for the time being, we're going to have all the all the highlighters the same, and we'll see how it looks. If it doesn't work, we can change it up. But it's nice to tie the the colors together. So we got this, it's looking okay, the uh, arm piece I'm not too keen on, but we can... I quite like this push more towards orange slightly. Change saturation, that's fine. There is something else you can do for color. Um, usually I'd use this completely instead of color layers, but uh, sometimes you can introduce it to the same workflow, um, which is gradient mapping, of course. This looks very weird. I've got a few gradient maps here, which make it look rather funny until you add the color layer, and you can work that into the design as well. Um, you can see this is picking up on highlights. Things like that. Um, I don't think this is necessary for this design, but you can use that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's, it doesn't. Um, I think generally I prefer having the control of color layers because you're, you're manually putting it in, but if you're trying to save a little more time um, and it doesn't have to be as, as perfect necessarily, then, then gradient maps can work very well. That's bad, let's not put that on that layer. This is my clothing layer. So I like the trim being this color, but I'm not sure it works for this piece. So I'm going to remove all the color that was added over on this side, avoiding erasing trim parts. We're going to add another layer. Right now it's becoming a bit of a mess of layers in a moment, we'll probably. Uh, so this is We'll probably clean them up in a second, add labels. Uh, this is an example of the pink I was showing. Why is this not working? This is strange. can't paint any of the pink on. Ah. ah. <laughs> oh dear. Long day. Um, I was on the eraser. Right, this should work. Right. <laughs> yeah, not being too precious about the lines at the moment. This is all still relatively early stages of the design or not the design but the the finished product um i don't actually know what i'm going to do about the finished render because to get there it's going to be a number of hours of boring rendering um and i don't know how well that's going to be as a, how, how well that's going to fare for for viewers um so i have to have a think about that let's back off a bit see the colors these are cool I think I need to make these more metallic maybe I think that would be cooler we'll have to look at some reference and do that in the final render perhaps um, have these as sort of 
old metallic uh, copper or brass or I don't really want iron. We can desaturate this as well. Back to a white, uh, maybe just a sort of cream. Let's find orange, orangey yellow. Uh, I think that's quite cool for now as a sort of bone even. I think that works. We can do other colors for other design, uh, the other variations, uh, just in case we wanted it as some kind of metal, as I was just saying. Um, I think this is looking cool as a color, color variant at the moment. We've forgotten to add trim. Right, so let's just color these. What's going on here? This is skin slash base. Cloth trim and the let's just say bone for now. Now we'll go to the trim layer, try and select this color. We need to try it, add it here where we've missed it previously. Not being too precious about it. But still trying to keep it relatively close. Uh, we're going to go back into the cloth layer and add some brown to this satchel. See where the straps are. Um, let's give it a leather belt for now. Perhaps make it cloth at some point, but that's fine. Um, of course we can have like a gold sword. Though I'm not sure it's gonna look great. It's interesting, but yeah, don't think it looks great. I prefer the steel or iron sword. Okay, I think it's looking cool for first design. Let's color the flintlock, which we haven't focused too much time on. The boots, nearly forgot. Um, so one might assume that the boot would be leather or of some kind, but we're running into that problem where there's just too much brown everywhere. Um, it's kind of all right. It's very dark. Quite like it with that. I think that's fine. And then we've got this much lighter brown here for the, I think this is a knife that we had and some straps. Oh, 
Okay. So there's one pretty good start to a color variation. Um, I can show you if I move this away so I don't show stuff I'm not supposed to. I can show you I've been demonstrating with this character I did a little bit ago. Um, so we sort of did the splicing of the design just now. Um, and then the color variation. So we've taken this as the the black and white design and then just put on block-ins of color. Um, and some of these you'll notice this is all the the armor is white and there's no variation on the armor but I've painted in uh, the markings which will of course change the value which is fine especially with sci-fi stuff you're going to end up with markings and things that doesn't need to be demonstrated in the black and white initially uh, in most cases so that's fine uh, with, with this guy we've probably got I mean I can't think of any markings that he might end up having So, we're looking pretty good right now. Again, that's all just soft brush, nothing to find too well. Uh, but it gives a really good idea of the um, color layout and design for the client. I might change these darker bits actually they could be something else. Let's change the let's call this secondary. Make sure it's color. Make it like pink. Just so we oops. Got some on the trim. Oh, we're getting it all over the trim at the moment. All right, you win. I think I've removed a little too much here. Can't really see that colour right now. Red's kind of interesting. Uh, we're probably going to have to lighten that slightly. The value is a bit dark. have a sort of purple or maroon. Yeah, I think something about there is quite interesting. And we'll leave that and we can... So this is first pass on color layers. Um, and then usually I may come back and clean it up with a normal layer um, and paint over values that I might want to change. So we'll move on to the next and what we can do is simply duplicate these by selecting them all, control J, moving these all up to the next character, crushing, uh, masking them onto the second character and then simply moving them across till there aligned as best as possible. Now, skin, uh, mostly want to keep the same, it's not going to change too much with the, the value like that. We can, however, change the cloth, which we've not 
because the base is oh we've put all the leather and everything on there okay we we'll have to do that manually in a moment trim second g okay let's start with the cloth let's make sure this is changed um so same brush nothing's changed at the moment let's get a deep red perhaps it's a bit pink I'm gonna just fill in this whole lot. Now this is obviously painting over the base cool tones as well, uh, which is fine. We can work a lot of stuff back in if necessary. Right now I'm just trying to get the overall look of this color variant to be different to the other one i think that's something that's important to note uh just through the whole design process really is if you've got variations of anything uh, if it's thumbnails at the beginning design variants on the second stage color variants anything like that um, do some that you think are cool do some that you don't like so much just as long as the designs each one is different enough from the next because um, it's all about giving clients options giving them ideas letting them see what path they want to go down that's the job pretty much okay Second variation, almost there with the main color. A bit rough at the moment, it's fine. Okay. Red. It's looking cool. I like the red version. Um, we're obviously going to change some other things about it as we go. I've always liked red and coppery gold trim. So we might keep that, but also it's worth changing as much as possible as I just said, so might not keep the trim. sort of colors we can have sort of less coppery more gold perhaps something like that that's quite nice um, bone we'll sort that in a sec let's just get this secondary sorted we can keep that quite blue Something about green always works with red. It's very high saturation. Um, that blue shows up way better than everything else. That's weird. If 
very weird. Um, yeah, I think sort of a, an olive green, something like that. It's quite dark at the moment again. I might need to change that value when we come to paint over. Um, this leg's looking quite nice. It's in a nice sort of contrasting position and color to the rest of it, uh, which is quite nice. Um, we can keep most of the leather straps and everything the same. We haven't colored the eye patch, I've just realized. So I'd, oops, add another layer, mask it down, color, eye patch, scrab, pink. Are we on? We're on an eraser, okay. Pink, there we go, that's better. Alter the color. Again, the green is looking appealing. Let's desaturate it, make it an olive green. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'm liking that. And finally, the bone. Now. Question is, I mean, it looks great as bone, as is. Um, could be interesting to have something metallic. So let's assume we're going to make it metallic for this one, just for the sake of it. Um, we'll saturate it a little more. Probably want it in. Ooh, I don't know, warm tone for now. I might have to start on a normal layer for this because it's going to bug me if I don't. So we're going to start painting over this slightly just quickly whilst we're still doing the variations. Um, let's work in darker value here. So we're thinking about how metal works and light works, reflections and all that. As I darken this, Okay, we're going to get some blue tone. Close to white. Let's highlight. We can alter this bone color still, obviously. Probably want to desaturate it a bit. Something like that's fine, just to demonstrate it's a different material at the moment. Okay. the 
change these colors of course as well maybe desaturating slightly Layer editor, we can alter the extremities of the light and the dark here. Make sure it's not solid white or solid black. Okay, it's looking good at the moment. So we'll leave it as that. Color variant number two. And then we do the exact same thing as before. Copy everything we've just done. Drag it above this last one. Mask it onto the final image, except for this top one and then just move it across try and line it up as best as possible it's quite rough okay now we know that we've now painted over this so we can go control U and look at other color variations in a similar way to the other components. A green might be interesting or this orangey yellow is quite interesting. Maybe we just go sort of somewhere in between with a olive green, perhaps. We can change saturation. The uh, that's quite interesting, like a very desaturated green. Yeah, I quite like that. That's cool. Let's try that. And then, same as before, trim, we can alter, oops, just press the wrong button. Uh, same method, control U, we're just altering the hue and saturation. Um, let's try not keep it as a warm trim as we've kept on all the others, just because a slight change would be nice. Um, so we're going to desaturate it slightly as it looks slightly odd in anything other. have like a blue trim but I feel like mm. I quite like where it was maybe more saturated than the others or less it's quite interesting slightly less um, Okay, this is the shoulder. I think this works as slight red, orange, brown, something like that. Eye patch, yes. Let's turn up saturation slightly. The red's quite nice. Okay. 
stick with the red. Can change the bone color. Or metal, do we want this one to show metal? I think this one will go back to the bone. So we can just turn off that layer. Revert it kind of to the bone. That's cool. Okay, um, we've altered some of the leather on here, so we're probably going to have to change that back under cloth. Um, I'll just try it without the soft brush for now. Sign. realize we've missed a strap here so I'm gonna add that on all the other ones as well okay we're looking at some pretty cool design color variations here um, I'm gonna change the leg on this one just to try it let's Try the red. Don't think that works. sort of beige it's looking a bit better I think quite interesting maybe we can get a slightly desaturated red here kind of works not a hundred percent on this Something like that. Maybe it's got some red tint to it, just slightly. I think that works fine. Okay, so we've got a couple of, or a few, uh, color variations now. Um, these are very basic color variations, but they get the point across. Uh, you can very clearly see the intention um, and placement of the colors, which is the aim of these. Um, let's just see how long I've been streaming. So that's an hour, I think. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, you can pretty quickly work color variations along with this color method, color um, color layer method. Just going to group these all together so it's nice and neat. And you'll see probably as I turn this on depending on how sensitive your screen is um, the values are slightly changed to their original 
Um, this one in the center particularly has lighter cloth to the other ones. This one looks as if it's got darker cloth than all the other ones. It's not dramatic, but it's noticeable when you've been working with the grayscale um, up to this point. Uh, so what you can do is just check so you can see the difference there as that alters the, the values slightly on the left hand one. Um, as I say, this isn't detrimental because after this stage you'll probably be working over the original values anyway. Um, so the, the next step of, of this character would be to take the variant I like the most, which, uh, if I'm thinking about it right now, is either the right most character or the central character. Uh, you take it, um, and at that point, you're pretty much just rendering to final, or at least that's what I would normally do. Um, so I take it into a, a single canvas that fits just the one character. Um, and it's usually like a 6K canvas because you need that detail that, that so you can get right in there. Um, and when I say final render, I'm talking like getting in there, adding the fine like material texture if possible. Um, just really cleaning it up as much as you can. Um, so I think I will probably show some of that process um, next week when I do my scheduled streams. Uh, I'm going to have to have a think about it in the meantime, though, because I think it will get quite boring watching me render. Uh, I'm assuming that these have been slightly more interesting because you've seen the design process and the color process. Um, but I imagine just like solid hours of rendering might be pretty boring. Just going to try something that I've forgotten just over top of everything. Is I've forgotten to do hair variations. This is very yellow. Um, maybe a bit more orange, get some ginger in the beard or something. Well, I don't like that hairstyle or hair color rather on this guy. is kind of interesting. I kind of already had in mind that he'd have a sort of grey black hair, um, but I want to leave this variation of colour in here somewhere just so you know you probably should be doing that. I like that colour, but it doesn't really work with the red. Okay, we'll just do that, leave that in there. Um, oh, actually, maybe that works on the blue. A bit better, maybe. Okay, we'll just go back, put that on there. That's fine. Okay. Um, I 
I think that works. So for today, I think we're going to wrap up the stream here, but we've got some good progress uh, on the character in the past couple of days. Done some more variations, nailed down um, a design closer to what the end one will be. And we've got some color variations going on. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much from this stage, it's going to just be rendering unless I've forgotten something. Uh, so I'd normally just render it out to a nice point, then I'd take it um, and do a back view, side view, um, cutouts if necessary uh, for like weapons or the arm, for example, that ornate piece. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll probably be showing some of that. Don't know how much of the rendering I'll be showing or if I'll have the rendering done at any point. If I haven't got the rendering done by this time next week, then I will probably be showing some of the rendering. Uh, but I'll let you guys know. Uh, if you want to make sure you catch the streams live, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is obviously where I am streaming. Although I might mention that I have been thinking about uh, Twitch as well. I've been using YouTube because I'm not familiar with Twitch and I had YouTube already and it was just easier to do it that way. Um, but given that I'm not thinking of doing edited videos at the moment, it's just extra work that I don't have the time to do. Um, for solely streaming it may be better to look at Twitch so uh, I'll I'll let everyone know but so for the time being if you want to catch my streams live subscribe to my YouTube channel and that should notify you when I go live um, if you want to follow me and my work and in case I'm streaming anywhere else you can follow my Instagram that's where I'm going to be primarily posting on my stories um, that's where I hang out most of the time um, and also you can see my portfolio on ArtStation and uh, I have a Twitter. I do use it occasionally, just not quite as much as Instagram. Um, those links are all in the description. I hope you've enjoyed the process so far. I'll be trying to move it along the next time I have a scheduled stream, which is next Wednesday and Thursday, 10 till 11.30 p.m. GMT. Um, and... Yeah, until then, uh, stay safe and do some art. Bye.